Good morning. Welcome to Garage this morning. Come on, wherever you are right now, get ready to give him praise. Stand up, begin to dance as we shout out to God with a voice of triumph. Our God reigns in the city. He reigns in the nations. He reigns in our homes. Come on, let's celebrate him. Woo!
The scripture says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Come on, celebrate this morning. You have Christ's identity. Hey, I have a new identity. I have a new identity. Hey, I have a new identity. Hey, I am healed, I am blessed, I'm the righteousness of God. Hey. I am feel this one new identity. I'm redeemed, justified. I am free from sin and death. Hey. I'm forgiven, I'm, forgiven. I'm accepted.
from splendor. Hey, hey. Born in a manger, live with the lowly. Hey, hey. Walk through this life with all his problems. Oh. He understands all that you go. Yeah. 
wonders
Lord, we exalt you in this place this morning. We lift you up for your goodness, for your loving kindness. Come on, wherever you're joining in from this morning, I'd like you to lift up the name of Jesus. His name is exalted above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Hallelujah. Oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth who have sent your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and with honor. Oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Say with me, oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Come on, oh Lord our God, we exalt you. How excellent is your name, how glorious is your name. We lift your name above every pain. We lift your name above every sin. We lift your pain above every depression. There is no name that will not bow. And Lord, this morning we exalt you. We magnify you. You are worthy of all our praise, of all our glory, of all our honor. How majestic is your name, Lord. We lift you up, Jesus, this morning. We say yes to you. We lift up our voices in praise to you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Lord, our God. How excellent is your name in all the earth. Oh Lord our God, we exalt you this morning. Hallelujah.
glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens. As your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens. As your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens. As your glory fills this place. one thing for me share the link share the link share the link copy it paste it on all your family groups invite everyone to watch us and join us this morning if you're watching us we are on many platforms right now we're on youtube we're on instagram we're on facebook we are on twitter we are on yeah those are the ones i can think of right now and so if you would like to join us you're welcome to join us on any of those platforms we are very excited to have you join us my name is Solome, and I will be your host this morning. I'm excited to be with you. I hope you catch the energy and get up and dance on your feet. And just remember that it's a good time to be in the presence of the Lord, for in His presence is fullness of joy. And at His right hand are pleasures forevermore. If you came downcast, if you came discouraged, this is the place you're going to be uplifted and refreshed and go out to be church in the world. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're joining us for the very first time and you're watching us on any of our platforms, I'm going to invite you to do this one thing. Tell us that you are a first time guest. Say hi, my name is Solome. I'm watching for the first time and I'm here. And we are going to flood you with all sorts of emojis of love, of fire, of dances, just to welcome you and make you feel very warmly welcome. Thank you so much for choosing to join us this morning. We are very excited to have you. Amen. And so I'm going to share with us who we are as Worship Harvest. As Worship Harvest, I'm going to invite you to say together wherever you are, we are a movement of the gospel, of discipleship, and mission. Amen. And what is our purpose? 
catalyzing spiritual, social, and economic renewal in our immediate communities. And as a result, the world, and we believe the church begins on Monday, and Sunday is garage time. Amen. We are currently doing a series called X Factor that is emphasizing who we are as a discipleship movement and so you're in for a good treat thank you so much for tuning in and right now i'm going to invite the media team to take us away with some videos for the week some horizon built updates and some mission or community stories and much more you're welcome to tune in right now media team over to you opportunity to do a frontier we visited 48 homes and over 48 homes eight people gave their lives to christ and those are eight lives transformed those are eight lives that will never be the same again and of, of the people that we came with two of the gentlemen gave their lives to christ one one week and the other and two weeks ago and today was the first time to actually go out and minister and they were so excited so you can be you're there you're wondering how can i do this it's not a lot of energy just start just start go out it's quite simple it's quite fun and remember you're not doing it alone you're doing it with the power of christ i'm the mother of Aino christine my name is i like this group because they have teach my children guru characters because nowadays they are all selling at me so if you're out there and you're wondering what's mc mc is a mission or community we do life together and yeah you join an mc and if you want to join an mc it's quite simple there's a number on the screen or you can reach out to us on any of our of our pages on social media What's up, Worship Harvest? My name is Solome Glory from Worship Harvest Gabba Road, and I'm here to give you the Horizon Build update. I'm here to say thank you so much. Thank you so much for your generosity towards the Arise and Build project. You know, when you give towards the Arise and Build, you're not just purchasing cement, concrete, nails, polynomials. What you're doing is going to last a lifetime time. Just think about it this way. Every shilling you give to Arise and Build is going to save souls, is going to bring people to the kingdom of God for hundreds of years. Yeah, you heard me right. I said it hundreds of years. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2 says, Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountains 
and shall be exalted above the hills. The church, the time is now for us to lay our mark on the ground, to raise this church and fulfill this vision and this prophecy. So right from the first time we had the service here and it drenched the slab and we had to spend most of the service pushing water away to the magnificent building that is defining the skyline of Nalia, thank you so much for your giving. Thank you so much for continuing to give even when everyone else is scared you're trusting God. Thank you for your generosity. <clears throat> thank you for your tenacity. Thank you for your faithfulness. May God bless you so, so, so much. Now, if you have not yet had an opportunity to give or to make a pledge towards the Rise and Build, it's not too late. I'm here to encourage you, to exhort you to fulfill your pledge. Today is a good day to make that pledge. Go ahead and do so. We eat an elephant one bite at a time. We chew it one small piece at a time. So every week, some kamane and some gumane, and we'll do it. Fulfill your pledge. As I talk now, our savings have exceeded one billion Uganda shillings. It is happening. Hello, my name is Mose and I'm excited. I would like to congratulate all the members of the Harvest Multi-Purpose Cooperative Society Limited on becoming a one billion shilling organization. Come on, people! Yes, it is happening. Thank you so much, members, for your consistency. Thank you so much, committee. Thank you so much, our chairperson, our chairman, Mr. Julius Kabugo, for mobilizing us and leading us. As I talk now, our savings have exceeded one billion Uganda shillings. It is happening. Remember, members, that we exist for the purpose of catalyzing spiritual, social, and economic renewal in our immediate communities and as a result the world but we can't participate in economic renewal out there in the world or in our communities before it happens at home in our own finances and that's why hmc have a small purpose cooperative exists to help you save money so that you can invest and you become a good man who leaves an inheritance for children's children so if you haven't yet joined us you are the only one we are moving forward swiftly. Or if you remember and you are one of those who do not save consistently, we are now going to become a consistent saver. Why? It just began. Remember, we have a big vision to change the economy of this nation and the economy of this continent. And we just started. Again, congratulations. Have a smart purpose cooperative. And congratulations, members. And on behalf of the pastoral team here at Worship Harvest and on behalf of all the leaders we congratulate you and we say yes, let's continue doing it until we achieve that great economy that we all dream of. enjoyed the news. I hope you enjoyed the updates. People, you see, when you're a part of Worship Harvest, automatically you become a leader. Somehow, if you allow yourself, you find yourself entering some sort of growth about leadership. And Transform is one of those leadership spaces. It's the leaders gathering. It's happening next month, the third and the fourth of September. If you have not received the link, ask your cohort Shepard, ask your missional leader, ask people on the, on, the, on the social media platforms. 
share the transform link. We know from John Maxwell that everything rises and falls on leadership. So we need you to be part of the leadership story of this nation, of this world, of this generation. Tune in, sign up using the platform link, the transform link, 3rd and 4th September. It's free. We need you to be a part of this. We need you to participate in the change in leadership, in the transformation, in the impact wherever. Amen. Transform is on. If you are hearing it for the first time, ask your location pastor. You need to sign up for Transform. You have understood. Very good. I'll continue right away. You know when you're on online, you have to just believe that things are flowing. Do you understand? Eh? So about you've said yes, or about you've not answered me, I know you've understood. Do you understand? Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, I'll move right along. I am going to share a family moment this morning. The family moment is for the members of Worship Harvest. Those who call Worship Harvest your home, this is a few minutes just to share a family moment. And here's what I'd like to share with us today. You see, we are doing a series currently. We started last week. The series is called X Factor. X Factor series is such a practical series. Like you can't live saying, what am I supposed to do after this? No. You, have, you, you live with action points. And so today, what did I want to share with you? James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25 but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror for he observes himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was so for some of us here if you did not do something about last week's teaching you have probably forgotten what pastor b3 was teaching about but when you do something about what you hear hear what happens he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this one will be blessed in what he does so what I would like to share with you this morning, be a doer of the word. For every teaching that's being taught, say, what one thing am I going to do? You know, usually what happens is when you hear something and it's exciting and it's enriching, usually the first feeling is, someone needs to hear this. So and so needs to hear this. Today I want to tell you, you need to hear this and you need to do something about what you hear. Last week, we got action points as simple as join a missional community. Stop being a pure Mahao. Just ask to sign up and be part of a mission or community. If you've been mean, being part of an MC, ask to start leading a huddle. Get people around you. Start a cohort. Say yes to opportunities from your leader to lead. Those are practical steps and then we will not be forgetful hearers. We are in a very practical series where you can't leave saying I didn't understand or why it's in the air. Um, it's not in the air. If you're not in a mission or community, you need to be part of a mission or community. If you've been in a mission or community and not being accountable and arriving when you want, showing action is now i'm repenting what am i going to do i am going to be subject to authority i'm going to respond i am going to be accountable i am going to participate be a doer of the word and not a hearer only amen amen yeah all right and right now i'd like to invite us as we continue in worship and in prayer this morning as we continue in the service to give of our offertory of our tithe in response to being blessed by god if you'd like to give your tithe your offering the numbers to 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 send to mtn mobile money number is 0778 618 418 or airtel 0758 618-418. I'm going to repeat those for the sake of those watching us or hearing us on Spirit FM. 0778-618-418. Airtel 0758-618-418. If you'd like to give through MTN Momo Pay, the code is 148722. 148722. That's MTN and Airtel is 116-0032. I'll repeat that. 116 three two if you'd like to give to our website you're welcome to do that on our platform which is worship harvest 
www.worshipharvest.org forward slash give. Worshipharvest.org forward slash give. And as we continue to give of our treasure, there are numbers running on the screen for you if you'd like to give through our housing finance, Absa Bank. They are all on the screen wherever you're watching from. You can go ahead and do that. And right now, I'd like to invite the worship team to come and continue to lead us in worship as we continue to give of our treasure to God. Amen. Now we pray, all glory be to God, in your name, your power at work 
are not a staying church. Come on now. Thank you so much, worship team, for that powerful, powerful song. Thank you. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me very great pleasure. Hey, are you ready? Are you ready? To invite my friend, the anointed man, God, who I have been teasing ever since I found out that he's the preacher. So he has had enough of me. But right now, I want you to put your hands together and welcome Papa Blesser. <laughs> Welcome, please have your seats. Thank you so much, Pastor Glory. You're moving sign and I wonder you bless my soul. Ah, wow. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching us from in the world. Welcome to Worship Harvest. Welcome to Garage. We are excited to have you joining us this morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Um, thank you so much, music team. We will go indeed. We will go. Thank you so much for that powerful worship. Um, like Apmo usually says, we have the best worship team in the world. And it is true. If you're doubting it, just believe it. Stop doubting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, the best worship team in the world. So thank you so much, worship team. That was powerful. My name is Ivan Muhumuza Amoti. Different people call me different names at different times. You can call me Papa Blesso. I'll be, I'm privileged, privileged and honored to stand here to share in the word with you. I would like to thank Apostle Mose and Pastor Ari for the opportunity to have me here to share the word. I send you their greetings, and I'll tell them you received their greetings with excitement and joy. Um, um, I send you their greetings. They are not here with us in studio today, but they are with us. I'm sure they are watching. Apostle Mose, Pastor Ari, we send you greetings. Where are you catching us from? I see people here online. Pastor Rukia, I see you, Ronaldo Cho, Mali. Hey, where are the Xima Kayelo Kekong? Baba Zisara, of course, my beautiful wife, precious Barbara, is online and she's in studio. It's power. Pastor B3. Oh, man. <laughs> Heaven celebrates. And you know what, Worship Harvest? Last week, through the missional communities here at Worship Harvest, 801 people gave their lives to Christ. Come on, make some noise. Wherever you're at, this is what heaven celebrates. 801 people cross from darkness to light from death to life through the mission of communities thank you so much for reaching out was worship a harvest downtown with 165 salvations wow i love it then worship harvest nalia 141 salvations um yeah and then worship harvest Tira. hey fire 52 salvations bishop stewart <laughs> We honor the anointing on your life, man of God. Um, yeah, uh, Worship Harvest Mukono 49. By the way, Worship Harvest Mukono is celebrating five years today. Pastor Roxy, Pastor Paul, we celebrate you. Thank you for doing a great work of God over in Mukono, the city of God. Worship Harvest Gayaza, 43 people. Worship Harvest in Tebe, 46 people. Wow. Awesome. Thank you so much for doing the work of ministry. Last week we started a series, a very powerful series, The X Factor. Yeah, which is a series about discipleship. And Pastor B3 
started it off super, super well. In case you haven't watched last week's sermon, I would encourage you to go and watch it. She reminded us that God, the discipleship is God's strategy for multiplying the church. And we read from Matthew 28, um, verse 18 to 20, where Jesus commissions us to go into all the world and make disciples of all all the nations. Remember Pastor B3 saying that you do not wish for disciples. You make them. You don't wish it does not count um what, what, what we love to count here, buildings, it is heaven counts disciples because that's the mandate God has left with us. And discipleship is about rescuing, raising, and releasing kingdom agents. That's what discipleship is about, rescuing, raising, and releasing kingdom agents. Um, throughout this series, what I need you to remember is that we are inviting Inviting you to do a life of significance. Everything else that you do here on earth is going to end here. It's temporal. Marriage is temporal. There is no marriage in heaven. It is temporal. You, when you get to heaven, you, you won't be welcomed with stacks and stacks of billions of dollars that you made while you were here. You will not be welcomed by all that stuff that we strive for here on earth. You know, the thing that gives you eternal significance is participating with Jesus on his mission, which is going to make disciples of all the nations. And so as we teach through this series, as we, as we share and learn about discipleship, we are inviting you to live your best life which is a life of making disciples. Be count, and it's the only thing that's going to matter. And discipleship is the dominant strategy. It's the most significant thing God wants you to do with your life. God wants you to move from being a consumer of spiritual goods provided by professionals. Uh, that's what most of the church is like today. Spiritual goods, someone's ETC provided by professionals, preachers, pastors. And he wants you to move from that place of just being a consumer of spiritual goods to being a discipler, to being a fruitful person, to being able to participate in making disciples for his kingdom. And so today, hopefully you understand now the why of discipleship. And today I would like to talk to us about the how of discipleship. Yes, you want to make disciples. Yes, you understand that it is the dominant strategy. Yes, it is the thing that heaven counts. Yes, it is the instruction we have. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Yes, you believe and accept that. Now, how do we go about this thing called discipleship? There's a story in Luke 6, 12 to 19 that I would like us to read through. And we're going, it's a window, a lens through which we can learn and get some tips on how we can effectively make disciples from the most effective disciple I know. Who is Jesus from scripture? Um, Luke chapter 6 verse 12 to 19. Let us read it together where, wherever you are. I know it's on your screens. If you have a Bible, please um, get your Bible and let's read the scripture together. The scripture says, Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Mm -hmm. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself and from them he chose twelve whom he also named apostles. Simon whom he also named Peter and Andrew his brother James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon called the Zealot. 
Judas the son of James and Judas Iscariot who, was, who also became a traitor. And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon and came, who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits and they were healed. Verse 19. And the whole multitude sought to touch him for power went out from him and healed them all. From this scripture we, we just get a window, a glimpse into the life of Jesus. Into how Jesus lived his life in a way that made him a very effective discipler. Because he was here for three years and the disciples he made in those three years are the reason you and I, are the reason for the billions of Christians that we have in the world today. He was here for three years. See, he, he was effective in ministry for three years, from 30 to 33. I won't ask the question. Actually, let me ask it. For how long have you been born again? How many disciples do you have? Hmm. Three years. Three years and he had a crowd of disciples. They are not just 12 or 15 because that's not a crowd. Crowd of disciples. Three years. Anywho. I digress. <laughs> so, in this scripture, as I was saying, we get a glimpse into the life of Jesus. How he lived his life. We notice that Jesus went up to spend time with the Father. He invited others in into deeper relationship. And he reached out to the multitudes to minister the gospel to them. Jesus went up to spend time with the Father. He invited others into deeper relationship with him. And then he reached out to the multitudes to minister the kingdom, the love of God to them. We see that this, this, this is how Jesus lived his life in these three spaces, up, in, and out. He had a relationship with the Father, he had a relationship with his disciples, and then he had a relationship with the world. And when you read scripture, when you read through the gospels, and you, you read through the life of Jesus, you realize that this is how he got to make the disciples. This is how he got to multiply himself. This is what got him to be effective as a disciple. Living life if, effectively in these three areas. Up, in, out. Here at Worship Harvest, we've, we've adopted this strategy, the up-in-out strategy. That is how we live life here in Worship Harvest. And so today I'm going to be expounding on what this means for you. Because I'm speaking to you not as a consumer, remember. I'm speaking to every one of you that is watching or listening to me as a person who has been called to make disciples, to be fruitful. As a person who has been invited to obey the mission of Jesus. To obey the call of heaven to go and make disciples of all the nations. And so I'm showing you how you can do it. And we are learning from the life of Jesus. Jesus went up to spend time with the Father. What's that song? What key are you in? <laughs> oh yeah, man. <laughs> I cannot do these things. <laughs> <laughs> in uh, and up in out that's the way to go up multiply the mission come on up in out mm -hmm. that's the way to go up in out multiply the me help me sing up in out that's the way to go, say up, in, out, multiply the mission. That's what we are talking about today, up, in, out, multiply the mission of God. 
And so we are going to look at each of these. What are those things called? Apexes, I think. <laughs> of the triangle. Up, in, out. Let's start with up. Relationship with the Father through prayer and the Word. We see in Luke 5, in Luke, uh, just before we go to Luke, in Luke 6, 12. Luke 6, 12. It says, now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain. He went up to the mountain to do what? To pray. To pray and continued all night in prayer to God. When you examine the life of Jesus, you realize that his lifestyle was prayer. That he often withdrew. The Bible says in Luke 5, 16, that so he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. It wasn't a one-time thing. He realized that his cultivating a relationship with the Father was one of the most important things he could ever do as a disciple. Investing time to pray. Because as you realize, discipleship is not... It's not a human thing. Let me, in your own power, you, you are not able to change the heart of a man. There is no strategy. There is no wisdom given. There is no book written. There is nothing that you can do to change the heart of a man in your own power as a human being. I, I tell you that without it, I've tried. <laughs> yeah, I've tried. You cannot change the heart of a man in your own human power. And Jesus demonstrated, look, if Jesus prayed, who are you? <laughs> if he spent a whole night in prayer, if this was his lifestyle, often, he often withdrew and prayed. You see, I found that this Apostle Mose used to talk about this thing. You guys pray. When you start praying, something changes about your ministry. When you pray over what? I used to think I got it. But I'd never clock it because, let me tell you a story. When we planted Worship Harvest Makere, I'm a very strategic person. Before we planted Worship Harvest Makere, I did my research about the university. I knew how many students are there. I walked around and wrote down every hall of residence and how many students live in the hall of residence. I didn't go to Makere, but I know the Makere anthem. I went and found the hostels, every hostel that is in Makere. I have it on a, on a sheet somewhere. The people in Worship Harvest Makere can testify to it. I have a sheet with every hostel, the number of students that are there, where it is located, the name of the hostel. I know Yeah, even those that started, even those they are constructing, I know them. Yeah. <laughs> I knew how many people I need in what time to evangelize the university. <laughs> and you knew I had my plot. Three years. Auntie Jesus was here for three years. <laughs> yeah. What are you saying? Three years. So, I write down my strategy, Bulungi, what? I gather my team, 13th January was 13 people. We met up here in Worship Harvest, Nalia. For the first time, I talked to those 13 guys, tell them about the vision. Remember, I recorded the video. I was in a red jacket. We talked about Worship Harvest, Makere. And we started. We launched. <laughs> We launched on 29th April at Emerald Hotel. It was 2018. Hey! With my strategy. You know what happened?
and work on meet to students they come in big numbers you sing and serenade them have an awesome worship team wait finally it occurred to me <laughs> that is not by might or by power but by my spirit says the lord i started praying i started praying go to the spot pray three hours down pray started praying in one year, we grew from 65 to 100 people in worship harvest Makere. Last week, our attendance was 835. In one year, one year like this, we grew from having <laughs> a database currently has 715 people. We have over 414 people, you know, 423 people. The last time I checked, being discipled in one year. Do you know what changed? I started praying. You cannot effectively make disciples if you don't value and enjoy time with God. Now in this season, God has been drawing us. God has been drawing you. Waking you up in the morning to pray. You know the Bible says, Jesus told his disciples in John 15, 4, that abide in me and I knew. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. The most important thing you can ever do as a discipler is learning to abide and enjoy the presence of God. And I can tell you, worship harvest, there is a grace to pray. There is a grace to pray. There is a grace for you to pray in this season. There is a grace to pray. There is a grace. There is a drawing. In MC Life, we've been talking about the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. There is a drawing. That is where your fruitfulness will happen. That's where your fruitfulness will happen. By abiding with the Father. Now when Jesus saw the multitude, the harvest, in Matthew 9, 37 and 38, you realize what he told them? I learned this from Pastor B3. The Bible says, then he said to his disciples, the harvest, Matthew 9, 37, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Huh? He says the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few, and then he gives a solution. He says, therefore do what? Therefore pray. He does not say therefore strategize. Yeah. Prayer is, is the, he says therefore that is where it all begins it flows from prayer if you are not praying you're going to have nothing to multiply and give to any you won't even be able to make a disciple because disciples are not physical children they are spiritual where are my people first come and my people I need here, they know themselves. Please fly onto stage. <laughs> yeah, here we fly. <laughs> I said fly, fly onto stage, fly onto stage. <laughs> All right. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Friends, prayer. I want to demonstrate something to you, something real quick. I need, I need like three extra people. Just three extra people from the studio. Please just run up onto stage. Imagine with me, where are the three people? The three people have arrived. Eh, no. Prophet. Abi. <laughs> okay. Yeah, here. All right. It's okay. We'll work with the four people. The four people. Please come. Imagine with me. This is the company. What's the name of the company? Jetty's Apples. <laughs> The company is JT's Apples, ladies and gentlemen. JT's Apples. 
<laughs> JT and the apple. <laughs> JT's apples, they have an orchard. Is it called an orchard, sir? All right. It's not a farm. <laughs> they have apples in plenty. And then you have, so, so he, he grows uh, packages, etc. apples. What's the name of your company? You're a retailer now. This one is a retailer. What's your name of your company? Aristan Sons. <laughs> <laughs> His company is called Ernest and Sons. Eh? And those sons are coming soon, both in the physical. <laughs> yes, wait. Ernest and Sons, all right? And your role as Ernest and Sons, what your business is, you retail apples, Okay. You have all these customers. Yeah, I won't mention their names. These are your customers. Okay? Now, let me whisper something to the customers. All right. So my customers have, uh, have an instruction. So if the customers want to get apples, right? What do you think Ernest and Sons needs to do? They need to go and get apples. So go and get apples for your customers. You have to pay, my brother. <laughs> That's for four apples. Pick four apples. All right. So the customers are over here. They need to get apples. It needs, they come to you. <laughs> All right. So then the customers go to our retailer and get each an apple. Of course, they have to pay. <laughs> That's that some of these customers seem to be bargaining for. <laughs> <laughs> and and he's testing to see whether the apple <laughs> all right so they have apples you understand these people all they need is apples what do you think is going to happen hmm? To this gentleman, Ernest and Sons and his company, when he loses contact with his supplier. Let's see what happens, right? Let's see what happens. Let's assume the supplier is not there. And then the customers come to pick apples. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, let's appreciate these guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is akin to what happens to you when you are not in touch with your supplier, who is heaven. Because you will have nothing to give to the people. If you've lost contact with your supplier, you'll have nothing to give to your people. So, discipler that I'm talking to, child of God, one of the things you're going to learn to cultivate as a discipler is a lifestyle of prayer. You need to pray. You need to abide with the Father. All right. The second thing we see Jesus, is, Jesus doing, man, time is flying and it's flying fast. <laughs> Some people are saying here, but honest is in Isaiah, he shall eat with no money. <laughs> Alright. The second thing we see about Jesus in Luke chapter 6 verse 13. Take me to Luke chapter 6 verse 13. He says, and when it was day, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve whom he also named apostles when it was day. He called his disciples to himself and from them he chose 12 whom he also named apostles. Um, 
Mark 3.14, give me Mark 3.14. It gives us a, a deeper rendering of, of, the same, of the same concept. Mark 3.14, I know I didn't give it to you. All right, the Bible, Mark 3.14 says, Then he appointed twelve that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach. The second thing we see about Jesus, we've talked about our relationship with the Father, is in he had a relationship with his disciples. He spent time in community, lived life with his disciples. Child of God, it's not enough for you to just be in the prayer closet. If you hang out just in the prayer closet and you don't come to hang out with your disciples, discipleship will become impossible. Because it's about birthing Christ in people. Getting people to grow in the character and competences of Jesus. Now you can't do it when you are separated from your people. And it happens best in the context of community. You see, I found very interesting things in this verse. Take me back to Luke 6, 13. I found very interesting things in this verse. The Bible says, and when it was day, that means he prayed the whole night until it was day. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> in the time I attempted to do a personal overnight. Sheke <laughs> braha. One thing Abmo talks about, where you go with the fire. I haven't left home, got people at home, no man. Eh? Lelo, it's going down. Packed for me some stuff. What? I reach the spot. Park outside, get to the spot, start praying. Sababa, what? Started at about nine. Yeah, then at about eleven. <laughs> Started checking the time, yo. <laughs> It was 11 p.m., man. <laughs> I started taking some tea, what? Then I lay on the platform. <laughs> I lay on the platform, started praying, what? These things that Abmo talks about where you start, then at some point you start, lema. Sika. <laughs> <laughs> I started doing those things and at about <laughs> no I woke up at 3.50 from the platform I woke up and I'm like hey Shabara Kazeteba yeah, I woke up in power. I, my spirit was praying, just that my flesh was sleeping. <laughs> anyway, so when it was day, guys, you're talking about in. When it was day, he called his disciples to himself. I found that, you know, at this time, do you realize that? Not do you realize. There was no Zoom, there was no WhatsApp, there was no YouTube. He didn't put it on his status and say, Disciples, where are you? I've finished praying. Please come now to worship Harvest Nalia. You see, there are certain groups I am on. At times you wake up in the morning and they are like, I need you in this place now. <laughs> and you appear. But for, for Jesus' case, and by the way, I'm trying to stick with me. Jesus' case, the Bible says, when it was day, he called his disciples. This shows me that the disciples sort of like, I, I think, had a rhythm with Jesus. They knew where Jesus was, what he was doing when, and so when he needed them, guess what? They were near. They were near. That's why he called his, this a crowd of his disciples. Because when you read... Verse 17, he says, And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples. It was a crowd of disciples. They were near. This shows me something like rhythm. I think Jesus had a rhythm. His disciples knew that we must keep around him in case he needs us. They knew that he's praying right now, but when he's done praying... <laughs> he's, going to, he's going to need us. He's going to call for us. 
so they kept around they were not in, they were not they were not secret service disciples not those people that you're always looking for on the zoom call morning 5 a.m where is this person you start calling them where are you what it's time for mc that is when they vanish it's time for garat i know some of the disciples are here in the comments checking for their disciples once they realize we have a certain group <laughs> where some guy always puts an emoji of uh, that light that <laughs> of the siren that is on top of uh, a police truck <laughs> whenever we don't as pastors whenever we don't put certain things up on our status he's like some pastors have not yet put things like he's always checking <laughs> he's all he's watching we send you greetings <laughs> <laughs> you know he had a rhythm do you know the rhythm of your discipler and are you available when they need you or are you in the secret service do you disciple okay now I'm, I'm talking to disciples people who are being discipled do you know the rhythm of your discipler and are you available when you're needed i used to wake up much earlier and then snooze around 6 a.m after prayer snooze up to about 8 a.m and then wake up and go about my day but my disciples are most active <laughs> okay they're active much of the day but they're most active in the morning in the morning they're praying they're sending out instructions read this help me with that check i have learned to adjust i am usually sober from about 3 a.m until yeah because i have learned to adjust to the rhythm of my disciple because i value relationship with them my week is arranged around them as a disciple you need spaces where you you need rhythms of connection that help you build connection with your disciple and as a disciple you need to create rhythms so that you're not mysterious to your disciples such that they know where to find you because the key thing about the inn is relationship with each other doing this thing in community and you know that relationships are built around rhythms healthy relationships are built around healthy rhythms so it's important to spend time with your disciples discipleship requires regular scheduled interaction with your disciples Jesus prayed with his disciples. He visited their parents when they were unwell. He shared meals with them. He had heated conversations with them, with, with, with his adversaries in their presence. He wept when one of his loved ones passed on in their presence. He was on a stormy boat with them, fed the 5,000 with them. He lived his life with them. And so what, the second anchor to how you can do discipleship is for you to to grow your relationship and build a healthy deep relationship with the people you're discipling if you're a discipler and of course for you to be an effective discipler you must be an effective disciple build relationship with the person who is discipling you so it's up it is in and let's talk about the out this clock here is very good and i like it yeah it's very good and i like it. oh yeah thank you thank you out verse 17 the bible says and he came down with them with the disciples he came down with the oh no, no, no. first take me back take me back i'd forgotten something yeah this one i have to say it as well take me back to verse 16 must be verse 16 No, 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 verse, verse, verse 13. He says, And when it was there, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose the twelve, whom he also named apostles. If you cannot name them, then you're not discipling them. Hmm. If you can't name them, then you are not discipling them. Because then you have no relationship with them. Ha. Huh. And maybe if he cannot name you, 
he's not discipling you. Those of you want to be discipled by certain people that you watch on TV. Moving on swiftly. I'll, 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 I'll leave you to first wrestle with that one a bit in your mind. Out, 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 out. 17. 17. He says, and he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd. Guys, a crowd of his disciples. A crowd. You know, one of my goals in life is to make 20 million disciples of Jesus. That's why I make money. That's why I sing. That's why I write. That's why I'm on social media. That's why I live where I live. That's why I do everything I do. 20 million. What's yours? Stood on a level place and I've started. I am on my journey. With a crowd of his disciples. A crowd of his disciples. God is calling us. He's given us a word here. He says a little one shall become what? A thousand. Small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. A crowd of his disciples. And a great multitude of people <coughs> from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases. So Jesus comes up from investing and being with the Father. He calls the disciples to himself to be with him, to hang out, be, build relationship and have a community together. And then with, together with the disciples, he goes out to minister to the needs of the people in the world. Jesus did not wait for the spiritually dead to come to him. He went to them. The Bible says he came down with them and stood on a level place. Like they came from somewhere and came to meet this crowd of people that needed to encounter the love, the life of Jesus. That is the aspect of out relationship with the world. Child of God, you have not been called to be the light of the light. The Bible says you are the light of the world. And it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Your discipleship is incomplete. Your rhythm of discipleship is incomplete if you keep everything to yourself and you don't minister life to the world. Jesus went out into the world with his disciples. He met the needs of the people in his community. He healed the sick. He touched the lepers. He fed the hungry. He opened blind eyes and deaf ears. He proclaimed the kingdom of God, inviting them to repent from their old ways and turn toward new life. Here at Worship Harvest, we love to say church begins on Monday. Sunday is garage time. It's this concept. It's cultivating a lifestyle where your salvation and your life and, and the life of God is not kept within the four walls of church. The church building. But where you're ministering life to the world. I can tell you the world is broken out there. They can do with some life. Can do with some joy. Can do with some peace. Can do with some love. They can do with some packages of food at 20,300 shillings. Last week, Worship Harvest Chira had 100, what, 60? 123 salvations. Because they went out with packs to a hurting world. They went with that. That's what discipleship is about. That's how you live your life as a disciple and as a discipler. You have the up, you have the in, you have the out. Let me tell you a story. Hey, let me tell you a story. In my form two, senior two, as in Kira College Boutique, this is how I learned to, I started on my journey of being generous. <coughs> it's a bit embarrassing, but I'll tell it. So in my form two, my mom, on visitation, brought me food. A lot of food. And she cooked very nice food and what, and so she would bring me food of all types. It's like she would be cooking for more than 
for like 10 people. I don't know how because the food was a lot. Yeah, for my MC, you know, she's mission. <laughs> so on one of those visitations, I don't remember what time it was, but I know I was informed too. He, she, she, she brought the food and I did not want to share it with anyone. Because my titles had pissed me off. Leading to VD. So what I did, I got the food, ate some of it, and kept the rest in my metallic suitcase. Now I had one suitcase that had clothes, that had uh, sunsip, yes, sunsip, that had those biscuits, that had gweke, <laughs> that had soap, that had books, that had everything. So I got the thing, and it wasn't a very big suitcase. So I got the food and kept it there. So my plan, again, my plan was to keep eating, eh? because my mom came early at about one. I thought that if I keep eating at intervals of like two, three hours, by the time the morning comes, the food will be done. I started after eating for a few minutes, I ended up, you know what happens when you eat quite a bit. I slept. <laughs> so I woke up in the morning and about half of the food was still in the suitcase. And I had started getting that interesting scent. <laughs> and so I was, I was ashamed. I didn't want to pick it out of the suitcase so I can go through it because kids were going to see me and they were going to laugh at me. So guess what the brother man did? He left it in the suitcase for another 24 hours. Until the scent became so bad. And people started looking for what is the source of this scent? So kids started walking around sublampers. We had guys called sublampers. <laughs> Walked around looking what until they zeroed in on my suitcase. And they summoned me. And I appeared. And told me, open your suitcase. And I opened the suitcase. And there were things moving. They were doing those interesting sinusoidal waves. <laughs> they were singing up the mountain, down the valleys, <laughs> in the suitcase. <laughs> and I remember carrying my suitcase through a crowd of students and taking it out and removing my books with a bit of the food that was there. Of course, my clothes didn't have a very good scent. Our uniforms, we used to put on white shorts and white shirts. And we used to have two pairs. We had one pair that we put on at school. Then we had one pair that we kept white that we only put on when we were going out. Yeah. Never we had conferences, what would appear? Well, I and white, clean. And people would say, man, those guys are clean. What? <laughs> we were clean anyway. That's what happened to me when I decided to keep life to myself. Some of you are overfed. You need to step out and give life to the world. Up. In. Out. As I conclude. Hey, Shababa. <laughs> People are so quiet in the studio. <laughs> you have been called to be the light of the world. Don't be like me. Don't allow all that life that you carry. All that love that is on the inside of you. All that peace and joy. Don't keep it to yourself. in a very destructive state for you and for everyone around you. 
That's what happens when you are not living your life in these three areas. When you are not having a thriving relationship with God. When you're not having a thriving relationship with your disciples and with your discipler in the context of community. And when you're, when you're not having a thriving relationship with the world. Ministering, evangelism, love, peace, etc. If you have the up and the in without the out, you're living a cozy life. Just social club. If you're living with the up and the out, you have a very good relationship with the Father. And then you have a very good relationship with the world, but you have no community. You're a chaotic person. That's what I was. Chaotic. Very chaotic. Just wake up. The Holy Spirit is saying this. You go do. Like you don't have a, a place where of accountability, of fellowship. If you have in and out, without up, if you have, really, you have community, you're ministering to the world, but you do not have a thriving relationship with God in prayer. You can know. And you can know that one. You, like, yeah. You will make disciples, but not of the Lord Jesus Christ. But for you to be Christ like, you need to have up plus in plus out. That is the way you're going to fulfill this mandate of being a disciple of Jesus and multiplying his mission wherever you go. And just a caution, this just the things I'm talking about help you as an individual, but we are called not to just follow Jesus individually, but also follow him in community. So these are aspects you need to live out as an individual, but they are aspects that you need to live out as well in community. Your MC should collectively have, your missional community should collectively have a, a thriving up, a thriving in, a thriving out. What do I invite you to do as a disciple of Jesus? Even as I conclude, I'm going to invite Pastor Solomon and Prophet Lynette to help me conclude. They are going to come. <laughs> what are some of the action points I'm inviting you to do today? One, start a missional community. You see, in Worship Harvest, we have very good parents. They have made this thing so easy for us. Start a missional community. Like you will multiply and make disciples with ease. It is a proven system. It works. I promise you it works. Start a missional community. If you're listening to me, you've been in worship harvest all this while. You in a, you had start a missional community this week. Why? Because heaven wants you to make disciples. And you know how to do it now. It's up, in, out. If you're not yet in a missional community and you're watching me or listening to me, join a missional community today. There's a number that is running on your screen in a few seconds that you're going to text for us, for, for us to plug you into an MC. 0775-642-449. 0775-642-449. Plug into a missional community. Missional communities, take the frontiers you do serious. Buy a pack of 20,300 and go distribute love and life to your neighborhood. And then finally, join the 5 a.m. prayer at your location. Wake up and pray in community, but also spend time praying alone. Friends, God has called us to live a life of discipleship. That's the X factor for your life, making disciples. Invite Pastor Solome and Pastor Lynette to just help us respond. Wow. Come on, wherever you are, let's put our hands together for Papa Blesso for such a powerful word, full of so much fun. I've really laughed running around in the studio, enjoying myself. Papa Blesso, thank you for such a fun and very powerful word. And before we go any further, you're watching us today, or you stumbled on this link, or you're wondering, okay, what are these people talking about? But you're here. You sat through the teaching. And you've never given Jesus your life. You have never received the life of Jesus and made the decision to become born again. I would like to give you this opportunity right now. It's not difficult. It's not a, a whole day's program. You just believe in your heart 
and you confess with your mouth and you will be born again. So if you're there, wherever you are right now, we are here for you. We are not going to rush it. Just raise your right hand wherever you are at home. Don't be shy about it. If you're in a restaurant somewhere, you caught this, you'd like to surrender your life to Jesus, raise your hand. We'll wait for you for a minute. If you're in a group, don't feel shy to be the only one. If you're with people who are rallying around you, that is amazing. If you're alone, all you need to do is make the decision in your heart and then confess with your mouth. And I'm going to invite you to make this prayer with me right now and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior because everything that we have taught, everything that Papa Blesso has shared today flows from an intimate relationship with Jesus. Right now, I'm going to invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for today. I make a decision right now. I make a decision right now. To receive your life. To receive your life. I say today I say that today I am born again. That I am born again. Take my life, Lord. Take my life, and Lord. And do something significant with it. And do something significant. I give with you it. my life. I give you my life. And I exchange it for yours. And I exchange it for yours. I will never be the same again. I'll never be and the I same receive you again. And I receive you in Jesus' you. name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. 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 Come on. And if you just made that decision and prayed that prayer, I'm going to invite you to text WhatsApp this number right now, 775-642-449. 775-642-449. Let us know right now that you have made the decision to get born again, to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. There's a pastor waiting at the end of the line to respond to you, to help you plug into our mission or community and have you make sense of the decision that you have just made. Amen. 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 Pastor Lynette, please go ahead. Wow, Pastor Blesso, that was amazing. I love stories, so I definitely have remained in my mind with the story of the food. You, the <laughs> maggots up the mountain, down the valley, on the <laughs> land, and in the sea. Oh, wow. Worship Harvest family. God created us not to be reservoirs, but to be channels. The way the human body is designed is that we take in and we release. Mm. True. Uh, <laughs> when a human being does not release, do you know what happens? It becomes an emergency. You can even be hospitalized. You'll be looking for Dr. Emmanuel Okulo's number. I'm a mother. When a child cannot release, we do... <laughs> motherly mother's enema just either put in your finger or get soap and push it up please don't make us have to push some soap behind so that you can release it's a sign of health when we eat and we're able to release now let me come away from the gross illustrations it is more blessed to give than to receive the more we give the more we receive the more you teach the more you get revelation the more you share the more you go out the more your own joy is released i feel very strongly that that is a very critical word to us as the worship harvest family this morning let's go out let's go out let's stop closing in and being selfish and being self-centered me myself and i and my children and pastor b3 likes to say especially to us mothers who are like my children are saying young i can't do this i can't do that you're putting your children in harm's way you're putting your children in harm's way go out open your home whatever it it, it it translates to something for you everybody who is watching who is a worship harvest member yes. that particular story has been translated to a very in a very specific way for you please respond please respond yes. let's go out we sang the song we will go we will go we will go we will go and in your going you will receive significance Amen. 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 Now, I speak God's favor over you even as we conclude. 
the service today. We declare that you'll be blessed in your going in and in your uh, going out. We speak that his favor will shine upon you wherever you go. We declare that you're blessed. We declare that you are fruitful. We declare that you will multiply. Yes, you will become an assembly of peoples. Yes, many descendants shall come from you. Many Amen. disciples. Amen. Indeed, you will become a thousand. Yes. You will become a strong nation. Yes. We speak God's love, God's favor, God's peace, God's joy over you this morning or afternoon or evening, whatever time you're watching us. And even as we conclude, I would like us to sing this together. Yeah. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. All what peace we often fall. Fate. Needless pain we bear. It's all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we tried some temptation? There is healing in the house right now. We try yes. some temptation. concerns you in jesus name amen amen thank you so much for joining us we'll be having this service play again at 11 15 please tune us invite your friends and may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all now and forever amen god bless you have a lovely and fruitful week